What up, everybody, and welcome to the Wolf's Den. I'm Dave here with Mary Ellen, and today we are going to talk about something that has been baffling my brain for about the last three weeks. What in the mother F are wardens, <laughs> and what is the purpose of the wardens? I do not get it. So I had Mary Ellen look up some stuff so she could try to uh, give us a baseline for this discussion. Yep. So... Why okay. don't you? So according to the wiki, uh, wardens have historically been used through, throughout Westeros, south of the Wall. Uh, during Aegon's conquest and the unification of the Seven Kingdoms, Aegon the Conqueror granted new warden titles to monarchs who submitted to House Targaryen. Wardens for the Iron Throne act as supreme military leaders responsible for the defense of their region in the event of foreign invasion. In times of peace, this prestigious title is purely honorary. Tradition holds that each title is hereditarily is held her, is passed down hereditarily, given to the lord of a certain family, but the king retains the right to award it to another of his choosing. This typically only happens if the traditional holder dies and his heir is not yet of age. Although in times of turbulence, the office may be offered to those holding a monarch's favor. So there's just a baseline of what the wiki describes is the role and purpose of wardens. Yeah, I wonder where they got that information. Is there a source? There are sources, and, and it's kind of scattered throughout <clears throat> the books. It's a lot of probably implied meaning. Um yeah, because it's never explained in any Explicitly. actual text that I could find what the heck a warden was. Um, like this information about them acting as supreme military leaders responsible for the defense of their region in the event of a foreign invasion. The wiki cites it as a so spake Martin, social structure, Moat, Kalen, and more. Okay. Well, I guess I can kind of deal with that. Um... But what I don't get, and I, the one part there that you were reading at the end about how they can just start willy-nilly handing it out to whoever they want to. Right. That kind of reminds me a little bit of, like, the situation that we have going on with um, Robin Aaron. With Robert not wanting him to be the warden because he feels like a war is coming. And he's like, I can't have a sickly little boy as one of my wardens when that happens. like they're, they're treating it like it's an important position. But what I don't understand is it seems like, by the definition that they just read, they are responsible for defending their border. But isn't that what every lord is responsible for doing? That's why people pay them taxes. People pay them taxes for defense. That's kind of what the original purpose of taxes were back in the day. You pay taxes. If all hell breaks loose, this great lord's going to organize an army and he's going to defend you and some of you who are close enough and get there before there's no more room might even get to hide behind his walls. Yes. Like, that is why people pay taxes. So, like, okay, and where your discrepancy or your conundrum comes in is that there's four. Yeah. However... There are seven great kingdoms. Dorne, will put that aside just for one minute, because as we'll see when we discuss the Warden of the South, they were, that role was largely to defend against incursions from the Dornish. Okay, so, all right. So they're fine. obviously not going to be made Wardens. Yes, wardens. so let's say there's six. There's still two major um, regions that have major lords that do not have any Warden title. So who do they answer to? The Riverlands and the Stormlands. Yeah, like, if someone's invading from the south, if something happens, does the Lord of Storm's End have to answer to the Tyrells? Mm hmm If it's happening in the east, does the Lord of Storm's End and the Lord of River Run, we'll just say at the beginning of the story to keep things simple, do they have to answer to John Aaron? Does John Aaron command them? Does John Aaron have the right to say to Lord Tully, gather your levies or gather men and come to the Vale and help defend the eastern borders against incursions coming from the sea? Exactly. Because Can, they're not awarded yes. it. And if they're the supreme commanders, 
of a united realm that seems like they would have the ability or the authority to summon those two re great lords. Now, and they would have to come if that guy summoned them. Another person had the same question as you. Because now I'm seeing with the So Spake Martin, this is what was asked. Do the houses who are wardens have some control over the great houses who are not wardens? Wonderful. This, this was his answer. Great. I already, <laughs> Don't get too excited. <laughs> I, I, I already know. Just based on what you, the look on your face just told me the answer. All right, let's go. The wardens are supposed to defend their regions against invaders. In theory, at least, they are each the supreme general for their region and therefore prevent any disunity of command. That's nothing. Of course they are. They're the great lord of that region, so all of the other lords in minor uh, landed knights and whatever, they all answer to that. But he didn't lord. answer what happened. Who do the great lords that are non-wardens, who do they answer to? Do they have to answer to? And could the Tullys be called upon by the western shores? Yes. Could they be called upon by the southern? By the, the southern? north, because by the, the north. north is right above them too. They They're have, the center. They could be, so could they be they called upon? They literally have a border with th three of the wardens. They're the only ones that aren't wardens. Does that mean that they can just be summoned at will? And can one of the wardens summon another warden if the situation is dire? Like, can Ned Stark call John Aaron and say, come, the and the Eastern, guy has to come? Yeah. Or the Lannisters, come, if there's and the a, guy, does he have to come? Because uh, here's my other question, like and how this could pertain in the future with the others coming. Does the Warden of the North have the authority to summon the other six great lords and the king to the north? Maybe we'll leave the king out of the equation, actually. The king throws the whole balance off. If you leave the king out, can the Warden of the North summon the Riverlands, the Erie, or the Vale, the Westerlands, can he, the Stormlands, can he summon them north and they have to answer because he outranks them? Because he's Right, also like a how warden? did all of the Wardens end up dealing with the War of the Nine Penny Kings? Wasn't that largely an incursion taking place in the southeastern part of... Yeah, and it was fought almost entirely in the Stepstones, if I'm not mistaken. Right, so what was the logistics in that? I'll, I'll try to look into that for a minute, but... Because Tywin Lannister was the highest ranking Lannister that went, if I'm not mistaken. Right. His father didn't go. His father was playing with his crofter's daughter or whatever. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, it says here, King Robert I Baratheon called upon Tywin, his warden of the West, and Eddard, his warden of the North, to help suppress Greyjoy's rebellion. So in that instance, Robert called upon the wardens that were in that territory or that region. So it was the northern and western. The two of them that had a border with him. But where were the Riverlands? Because the Riverlands have a huge border. They with have, them. yeah, they have a stake too. So what happens there? Are they, they just protected to... just because? Yeah, it seems like if that was what happened, and I didn't know that the Riverlands people didn't show up. So when that happened, the Lannisters, Starks, and Baratheons just went there and fucked them up. Mm-hmm. But this brings me to the next point. The okay. point that was driving me crazy is if you're going to, like, look at the, what that circumstance was right there. Tywin Lannister and Ned Stark just bore the full brunt in terms of manpower... Time, money, t cost a lot of money to go invade the Iron Islands. They had needed ships that needed to be built. They need to arm all these guys. They need to feed all of these guys to go take care of this. this. These are fairly enormous expenses. So does the king call upon the warden? Or does the warden just act in separate from the king? Or can both ex can both occur? Because this is because the first person who's going to find out that there's a problem is the warden. Is the warden because it's happening where he is and news travels slow in their yes, world. Yes, yes. So I've been wondering if wardens have the autonomy to act to on assemble their 
and act. Exactly. Like, if there is a wildling invasion, the northern... <clears throat> excuse me. The northern lords, and in particular the Starks, need to have the ability, if it's necessary, to call their banners, assemble an army, and march north and meet them. Mm -hmm. By the time the king gets word, assembles an army, and marches up there, the Starks would have already taken care of it, and it would be way too late to deal with the incursion. The incursion would be out of control by the time the king gets there. So the Starks would have to be able to act with autonomy. Like, yeah, we're going to send you a raven, but we're already moving. We're not waiting for your answer. If it's okay, we're going. Yeah, because time is of the essence. Time is of the essence. We're not By the time let... a raven goes there, the king writes a message, and it flies all the way back. It's been like a month. Or more. What did they say? A raven can fly 100 miles a day? Yeah. It's like 2,200 miles or so. So that's a 22-day flight there and a 22-day flight back. Yeah, a lot can happen in... A month and a half. Yeah, a wildling army has already... Moved <laughs> is, Could have already made it to Winterfell. Right. Sacking all the little castles on the way. Yeah, and villages and like whatever. Lady or, Hornwood's place, stuff like the Places well, like Hornwood's that. Hornwood's are farther south, but it would be like Umberlands and the Flints and Norries and all the mountain clans and all them. They would... I would imagine that if this is happening... There's no time. 40, no 44 days or t 50 yeah. days. And I would imagine that the Starks probably empower the Umbers. That I would imagine the Umbers take the brunt of wildling incursions in terms of bigger houses in the north. The Umbers are, must have the autonomy to be able to do it. And but, they do. And we know that they do. Because he says to Bran, we're, we've been dealing with a lot of... Wow. In wow. wildling invasions and incursions, they're and they're happening more frequently they happen now. To, yeah, and John mentions it um, to Stannis. But Ned gave them the autonomy to throw them back. You can get them out of here. Which is but if there's the a large scale attack, it then becomes the warden. Like if there was a large scale wildling a man's, invasion, a Mance Raider style wildling the, invasion, Umber's calling to Ned and saying, "My we people, we don't have enough. Yeah, you need to come exactly." And then he would have the autonomy to raise the entire North to deal with it, to march north to meet them. Yes. But like what, Ned but thinks my to question himself. Is, my question is: What if this is happening in the Stormlands? Let's just say, like, the Volantines get wild and they just decide that they're going to take the Stormlands. They land, and right. they, they land right in the same spot that John Connington landed. Yeah. Right? Or another part of the Stormlands, yeah. Does or where Stor Arianne do, and them land. Does the Stormlands, you know? yeah, do the Stormlands not have the same right? They would defend themselves, so what... They would defend themselves, but they wouldn't have a bigger power to call upon. But... Not a warden. They'd have to go right to the king, I guess. But how is that any different? That's the thing that I'm not understanding. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Is where I'm not understanding it. Do the Riverlands not have the the right to defend their Should shores? Should they even be great the lords? lords then? Because they're protected by everybody else. Should the outer border lords be kind of a step ahead of the lords of Riverrun? Because they're the ones who guard the borders. Yes, they're just existing in the bubble in the middle. Well, they're not entirely like where the um, Malisters live, for instance. They're There's right Ironborn. Next to, they're yeah. right next to the Iron Islands. They have a huge shoreline there with the Iron so Islands. So who do the Malisters ask for help if there's, say, a large amount of Reavers coming? I would imagine. That they can't. I would imagine they send, they send birds to River Run, and River Run would raise the Blackwoods and the Brackens and the people who are close enough. So why and aren't the, they wardens of... Whatever, river, and, uh, the river. The phrase, they're the ones who are the closest. So that's Shouldn't they be wardens then too? That's what I'm thinking. Like, wh why are they not all wardens? How is being a warden any different than being a lord? Because it's your job to defend your lands. If you're in the Stormlands and this is happening to you, you're raising your banners and you are going and fucking them up. You're like not... Lord Baratheon is going to answer the call when the little village yes. town sends a raven that says there's a large amount of reavers. And they are just, sto they are... Reaving and raving, or, yeah, you know, that, whatever. Raping, reaving, doing all kinds of stuff to our people. 
Yes. The Lord of Storm's End is going to go defend go, that. He's going to go defend it. He's going to... So how come he doesn't have the title Warden? Yes, or what is the point of a Warden? That's the thing I'm not getting. Yeah, I understand. Every, it's every Lord's responsibility to Major defend Major Lords his, of the Seven Kingdoms. Even the small Lords. Look at the, uh, uh, the Sworn Sword. Yes. There was a threat, kind of, to his land, and he raised his nine people. Eustace Osprey had his nine guys. Yeah. And they were really impressive guys. But you know what I'm saying? Like, that that's like a microcosm of the whole. Wyman Manderley is Warden of the White Knife. Yes. He's kind of like the first line of defense into the north. And the Umbers are going to defend their lands as well. And if they need help, Lord Stark will raise other people. But it would be the same thing in the Riverlands. It, or if the Malisers are under attack, they're not going to ask for permission to defend themselves. They're no, going, they're going to defend themselves defend first, themselves and if they can And call their, their higher lord. They're going to call River Run and be like, yo, we are getting attacked. They're probably also going to send birds to the Freys and the Blackwoods who are close enough to gather guys and come their way. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, how is this working? What's the chain of command? What's the logistics of the warden? And obviously... Hoster Tully, we're just going to pick the houses at the beginning of the story to do this. Yeah, yeah. Hoster Tully was the supreme commander of the Riverlands. He was in charge of the Riverlands. How is that any different than being the warden? A warden just seems like a completely empty title. Unless he gave special privileges to the people who are most likely to have to deal with external incursions... So like and they, foreign invasions, like the North and, has got that big vast ter- territory. They could hit, be hit on the West Coast, East Coast, and North. Yes, they can have raiding uh, from the Ironborn all along their West Coast. On the North, they have crazy wildlings, Skagos, who knows, the, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And on the Western side or the Eastern side, they have God knows what could happen. Slavers, from Essos yeah, and, exactly. So, Stuff from the Stepstones, those people try to come up north sometimes. Yeah, which is why the Manderleys are there. And the Starks granted the Manderleys the title Warden of the White Knife. Because, like, they... That was a very vulnerable position. Yes, because in the, the White north. Knife River goes almost right to Winterfell. So if you get up that river, you can basically sail right up to the heart and you could attack Winterfell. Yes, which, and like we've talked s- about this before... Nobody and nobody really attacks. Nobody really attacks Westeros, though. There aren't big foreign invasions other than Aegon the Conqueror. Yeah, he's the only foreign invasion that we really know of that had any success whatsoever. I guess you could say the Andals did it. That was a foreign. Invasion. Oh yeah, I guess that's true. The Roinar did it. That was a foreign invasion. I guess so. Aegon was trying to eliminate the possibility of that ever happening again. Yeah, I just don't understand what what it means to be a warden as opposed to being a lord. That's the lord's job to do is to protect his land and his people. Did lord... And if you're the high lord mm-hmm. of the north, the Starks, why do you have to have an extra title? Is it the cuz if it's not the title that makes you the highest ranking lord, then why don't the Stormlands and the Riverlands also have that title? Because it, it could happen. You could, the Stormlands could get invaded. We saw it happen right in the books. Yes. The Riverlands can get invaded. They Actually, pretty shoreline. fairly easy. Yeah, they have a huge shoreline. Now, most of the invasions into the Riverlands, the easiest invasions into the Riverlands would be from their neighbors. But they do have that shoreline. They can have to deal with Iron. But Horn. since the lords, like the Western, the Wardens of the West, Wardens of the East, since they're in charge of the borders, are they like a step above, like, say, like Lord Tully? That's what I'm trying to understand. Like, could the Northern lords call the other lords? Or, or if it got really bad, could the Tullys be called upon by somebody? Yeah, can the Starks just call the Tullys and the Tullys have to come? Because they're wardens and the Tullys aren't? Or could, could the, the vale Tyrells call? Mm-hmm. just call the Baratheons yeah. and be like, you have to come. I said come, you have to come. 
we need help dealing with the Dornish marches. And it's not like the Stormlands don't have a good amount of border with Dorn. They do. That's what I'm saying. They the have, marshes. They actually have more. Yeah, they have more with mm-hmm. Dorn than the Reach does, but they're not granted that title. And it's not like the Baratheons or the Tyrells. Neither one of them will really do a super high title. You know what I'm saying? Here's what it says here. Now there are smaller scale wardens by region. There's Warden of the Prince's Pass, Guardian of the Prince's Pass in Dorne, held by Franklin Fowler. Warden of the Sands, Guardian of the Deserts of Dorne, only granted one time, so this is an extinct thing, to John Rosby during the First Dornish War. Okay, we'll leave that one out. Warden of the Stoneway, Guardians of the Boneway in Dorne, held by Lord Anders Ironwood, as per the tradition of House Ironwood. And lastly, Warden of the White Knife, Guardian of the White Knife in the North, held by Lord Wyman Manderley of White Harbor. Yeah, so it seems like you're, it's a military thing, it seems. Yes, and upon its inception, the Warden of the South, that was to deal with the Dornish. That's yeah. what it says in the wiki. They, that Aegon created the Warden of the South... So that the Reach would have to assemble and deal with any Dornish incursions or invasions or attacks. The I don't wardens understand. of the why, West. Why wouldn't you just n- make all of your great lords responsible? Like, wh- why would you? Why do you come need an additional new fancy title? Because every lord is responsible for doing exactly that. Make them the make every every lord is the supreme general. Yes, unless a greater lord than him shows up, but. It, up until that point, when the Umbers are fighting in wildling invasion, Great John Umber is the general. He's in charge. If a if a Stark shows up, now he's not in charge. Now he's like now he's only a three star general. Now there's a five there's a four star general on the scene, so he is answering to him. It says he George says wardens are supposed to defend their regions against invaders. In theory at least, he says. They are each the supreme general for their region and therefore prevent any disunity of command. In theory, at least. I don't know what that means, but... is it? Maybe it's just like a very empty title. It just seems like they, they include... Those it. exist in history. Yeah, I think it's just this completely weird... Of course the Lord of the Vale is going to defend... The veil from invaders. Yeah, what the hell else is he going to do? Without the title Warden of the East. He's going to do that anyway. Exactly. I see, yes. And so... Same as same as uh, the Lord of Casterly Rock. Yes. Same as any Lord. Doesn't even matter how great or how small. If something happens, like I used that Eustace Osprey example. That dude had nine guys or whatever it was. But there was a threat to his immediate land. But that was a domestic threat. This is about... Aegon wanted to make sure that any foreign invasion, that there would be a, a unified supreme general, which I think it's a little redundant. Why not just make the Lord of Winterfell the supreme general of that entire region? That's what it is anyways. Right. So it doesn't make sense to me. He's the highest lord of the northern region. Or whatever you want to call it. Province. Whatever the heck you want to call each section of Westeros. He's the governor, essentially, of that state. Right, I understand. So he's in charge of that state. I understand. Maybe Aegon just wanted to make sure that these great lords knew it was their responsibility to assemble an army to defend the whole region from any foreign invasion. Yeah, uh, but that's what they're going to do anyways. This is the thing that... Maybe he was worried that they wouldn't. I'm trying to figure out why he would do it. He was a very smart guy. He was shrewd. He didn't do stuff that was superfluous or whatever, just for no reason. You know what I'm saying? He was very pragmatic. 
Aegon saw a reason, or George just... And what huge invasions ever happened That's on what the I... eastern shore that resulted in the Arryns being named? Well, the Arryns and the Starks have both historically been dealing and defending the Stepstone, or not the Stepstones, where the sisters are. No, historically speaking, they've been fighting over the steps. Yes, but I thought there's some precedence for even the Lords of the Vale wanting some of these reavers and pirates to not. They, it was in both of their interests to try to keep that area under control because it, they both had shoreline exactly, near that area. Exactly, exactly. So maybe that's what he's referring to? I think there's even an example where the two of them made common cause to, to, to put an end to it, and this is before Aegon there or anything. They were like, listen, right. let's just... Fuck these people up so they go away and leave us alone. Yes. I'm sick and tired of dealing with them. Maybe by having the title warden, the king now had the ability to call upon them. To answer the call, like in... That situation with Greyjoy's Rebellion. With the Greyjoy Rebellion, where... Like, you are the warden and you have to answer. So that's great. But 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 what's the the benefit? He's the king. If he calls upon you, you have to answer anyways. Like, right, don't, you don't need this title. In order I don't to... understand. Like, is there additional privileges? Are there financial incentives for him? Because they will, in the, those events, be the ones who bear the cost of defending the king's borders. Okay, maybe some lords wouldn't care about the small folk and let him get attacked, and he wanted to make sure that even if it was a POS leader, that that person would have that responsibility built into the warden title. Uh, I think that's a little altruistic. <sighs> um, no, I'm saying some Giving lords... them a title doesn't mean they're going to do it. Okay. I'm just trying... I'm trying... I'm thinking out loud. I don't know. So if you ever meet George, is this going to be a question that you have for him? Definitely. <laughs> what if he gives you that answer he gave this person on the So Spake Martin archive? I'll, I'll tell him to stop being a jerk. Because <laughs> <laughs> I gave you his answer. He was asked this very question. I was like, I'm going to need you to not be a jerk. I need to understand what wardens are. <laughs> I, I I know it's a weird question. It's it, it's not something that's a spoiler. Or I can't think of it as a spoiler because the realm's so fractured at this point that who cares about titles that Aegon was handing out to people? But it's still something that matters to you in your brain. But my brain needs yeah. to understand what the purpose of this title <laughs> is because it doesn't make any sense to me because it's like making people do what they were already going to do. Or is that altruistic? If you're getting attacked, <laughs> you're going to do what you have to do. No. But maybe what if the Lord of Winterfell is like, I don't care what happens to those people out by the shore. Then they're not going to be. The, then they're not going to be the Lord <laughs> of Winterfell for very long. Right, they'll get overthrown. Like, right. Yes. How? Because you can't get inside the walls of Winterfell. Yeah. <laughs> you could starve them out, though. I'm just saying, maybe like it's to. You to, could besiege it, and if. And if the whole of the North is against them because they are not taking care of their end of the bargain, like I was saying earlier, the entire purpose back in the day, the reason that taxes were always a thing and people were willing to pay them is because you paid up the chain. So when all hell breaks loose, you have that protection. Or at the very least, if you're a guy and you're called up to be in the army the guy they're gonna arm you and stuff like you don't just have to like pick up a stick and be yeah like, right they're gonna give you a spear and a shield and so your question more is like what is this military structure how does it work what is it, you know who's bring because it seems like these guys bring whatever they've got at their at their little house the king's not arming them no each lord arms his own men just like in right. Eustace Osprey, they were like making them shields and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, they, yeah. Were, they were like out of like twigs or whatever. And <laughs> <laughs> they were like baskets. But so what's the incentive from the crown? There has to be Something. some sort of incentive where when you are called upon to Or is that an oversight realm, in that, and this is something that people don't like? They don't want these wardens. No, because they announce themselves as wardens like it's like Proudly. some proud, awesome thing. <laughs> I am at Odd Stark, Warden of the North. Like Lord blah, blah. of Winterfell and Warden of the North. I sentence you to die. I'm going to cut your head off. Right. 
Well, and if Ned's Rob, proud and of that. Robert was making a big deal out of Robin, Robin Aaron being the war. Because he kept saying, there's a war coming, Ned. There's, there's a, a war coming. He coming. goes, and I can't have that boy. So he named it to Jamie. Because he's supposed to be the commander of his eastern army. But I still don't even understand how, like, that's that important. Like, House Aaron could just, like, appoint some... Like a BAMF. Yeah, like, give it to Bronze Jan Royce. Give command of the What if it was Bronze John Aaron? He was, like, John one foot Aaron's, in the grave, too. John Aaron's, like, 78 years yes, old. Yes, he was once a warrior of... Yes, of renown, but he's also like 80 now. Yeah. So even if he was still alive, is that any better than the eight-year-old? Well, I guess, yes, it is. Yes, but 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 it's not great. Because at least he He has has experience. He has experience and he he could just be... And he doesn't have tremors. ...the tactician or whatever. He doesn't have to be out there actually fighting. Understood. Uh, Yeah, I guess. He's bringing something to the table. Plus, he's a name that people will follow. Uh, which brings something else to the equation, um, especially back in the day. You, but what if it? But what if it's a regular guy that doesn't? Is not like what if it's an Edmure? What do you mean? He was really impressive. <laughs> he won a mill. What if? <laughs> what if it's like an Edmure? Uh, Edmure got captured and de- got defeated and captured once, and then the next time he won a mill <laughs> and cost them the war. Yeah, um, yeah, lost Jamie, you know, because, like, his action caused a ripple, and, you know, there you go. Things really went the other way after that. Um, I don't know. What was your question about Edmure? Oh, I don't know. I'm saying, like, what's, what if it's, okay, why is it a big deal if it's another person? Why can't you just appoint somebody from the veil? Yeah, like, why couldn't you just suggest and by suggest demand that Brennan Blackfish because he was there. Yes, or Bronze Jan Royce, like or give somebody him, yeah. give him control of the army if a war happens. You don't even have to do yeah, anything. Yeah, I did think until... it was a blunder. Why would you want a foreigner? Because a Westerner is kind of a foreigner there. Yes, yes, they're all Westerosi, but you're going to want somebody from the Vale. Yeah, you want someone from from the a native. To you don't want Jamie Lannister. They'll the... listen probably, but you just it's better if you have a native. Yeah, somebody who's from there that everyone respects. Yeah. Exactly. Or if you weren't even going to get that, the blackfish is just a neutral almost that everyone ex- respects. Exactly. There were some better like options. Like if all hell breaks loose, you go, "Liza, listen to me." If all I, I'm leaving your son in charge, but if all hell breaks loose, your uncle is in charge. You understand what I'm saying? Your son's not in charge of the army. Your uncle is. No, he's still Lord of the Vale, but the warden until he's of age. Yes. The as his regent, which I'll name you. You need to then name your uncle protector of the Vale. So when, or I just will. Or I will. Because she won't do that. She's so unreasonable. But Re- the king, the needs, king the, doesn't, it's that the, important. But here's that the thing. She, that, the king doesn't ask when the king tells you something, that's it. The yeah, king's but these not tullies ask. just do whatever. The king isn't asking. <laughs> these tullies just do whatever. Uh, <laughs> kings don't have a tendency to ask you. You know, can you do me a favor? No, the king just goes, this is what you're going to do. And then he walks away because that's the whole conversation. <laughs> yeah, well, with Liza and them, you never know. Uh, that's off uh, off subject, but um, like, I just keep thinking there has to be some sort of financial incentive. There has to be something that goes with this responsibility. It for the way that it's esteemed, foreign invasions happen like once every like hundred thousand years. That's obviously an exaggeration, but they're they're exceedingly uncommon for something like that to happen. Which leads me to believe that there has to be something in it for the great lords that are taking on this additional responsibility. Even though it's rare, they have to get paid for it or something. There has to be some added prestige. Maybe in the War of the Nine Penny Kings, the highest lords, the wardens, 
were the supreme commanders of the army or something. They they have to. I don't know. I. It seems like maybe that's the case. Especially the way Robert said it was important. But if you're going to bear the brunt, there's got to be something extra. So George. Subscribe to my Patreon. <laughs> you know, just, give us the answer. Just give me the freaking answer, man. I, I I need to know what the deal is. And if any of you guys have any ideas of what the actual purpose of a warden is <laughs> and how it's different than just being the High Lord, like the Baratheons or the Tullys or whoever, I would love to know what your thoughts are because I've been trying to figure out what the difference between like a Lord Paramount and a warden uh, what is the difference doesn't seem to make a smidgen of difference to me it just seems like it's just some random extra words that are attached to their title Mm -hmm. so uh, you got anything else you want to add no no I think this was a great discussion and if anybody has any ideas please let us know yep have a good one everyone